Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our uh, followers over on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Uh, I do want to uh, remind you today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at our P.O. Box, just to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913-15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. Uh, the original air date, February 3rd, 1951, and this one is Pirates Off the Coast of India. Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by... RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Here's a word from RCA Victor. The amazing thing about the exciting new world of television is the way that television sets have become handsome, important pieces of furniture as well as functional instruments. Here, as in every phase of television... RCA Victor is the master. Take the fabulous new RCA Victor console with million-proof television, America's favorite television picture. Even if these cabinets were absolutely empty, they would be worthy of a prominent place in the finest of living rooms. When you shop for television, consider the distinction an RCA Victor console will provide. For lovely period styling, see the RCA Victor Fairfield. Have your dealer show you the RCA Victor Regency. For the sophisticated living room, there's RCA Victor Modern. True modern through and through. And RCA Victor offers you a breathtaking cabinet in the provincial. Yes, when you shop for television, be sure to consider the distinction of an RCA Victor console. Off the east coast of India lies Bengal Bay, a vast and rolling tropic sea stretching a thousand miles from the mouths of the Ganges, southward to Ceylon, Sumatra, and the Indian Ocean. Many an adventurer of the past sleeps damply beneath its dark waves, and even now on starless nights, others of the living go to join the dead. Steady, keep the searchlight on that fishing doll. Yes, sir. Still no sign of life on board. Scared, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Better fire another shell into it. Okay, sir. Tie for the water line. Right. On target. Steady all. Steady this. Ah, blew her right out of the water. Good shooting, Gronko. Ahoy, the tower. Prepare to submerge. Lash the gun and let's go below. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd better take that flag down. We may need it again. We sure didn't need it tonight. Not a single survivor again. It's better that way. Survivors mean witnesses. Witnesses mean trouble. You mean trouble spelt with an X? It's always a possibility. Let's go below. Ken, I know it sounds fantastic, but it's happened. There's the cable from Calcutta. The third ship in six months to leave Calcutta and disappear somewhere in the Bay of Bengal. Guess I'd better read the cable, Chief. Now, later, Ken. Here's the story in brief. This Mohammed Lal had been fishing in the Andamans and was beating north for Calcutta in a sailing dhow. Around midnight, he noticed the lights of a freighter coming from the northwest. It was still four or five miles away when it suddenly blew up. A tremendous blast. 
And sank immediately, is that it? Yes. By the time you reached the spot, there was only a few pieces of wreckage and this submarine. Cruising around on the surface and machine-gunning survivors. Chief, if that's true. Yeah. Anyway, Lal was smart enough to grab a life jacket and slip over the side of his boat and swim away from it. A few minutes later, the sub picked it up in the searchlight and sank it with a couple of shells. Oh, it's quite a story. Listen, Lal claims he saw something in the searchlight. That sub was flying an American flag. What? Chief, you don't suppose they're trying to use that angle now to... I don't know, Ken, but we've got to find out. Right. I checked with the Navy just to cover. They've got one light carrier on maneuvers in the Andaman Islands. Indian government observers aboard. No subs. Hiding under an American flag. Machine gunning survivors. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I just happened to be... Uh-oh. How do you do, Mr. Chief? Zagon Zellschmidt. By heavens, when it isn't Pagon, it's Cousin Zagon. Oh, shoot. I guess we're just a friendly type. Not with me, Zagon. Now get out. I just got here. Hey, what is this big map on the table? Get out. The Bay of Bengal. Boy, is that an ocean for you? I used to be a steward on the Georgia Line from Cairo to Calcutta. I don't care what you used to be. If you chief, don't I'll have Miss Brooks check the airlines right away. All right, Ken. I want to get That's Calcutta crazy. fast. I wonder what ever happened to that girl. Then Zagon. Are you aware of the fact that you and I are alone? We are? Oh, well, I suppose that's the way... We are? Now, look, Mr. Chief, let's, let, let's keep our tempers. Let's not be hasty. Let's not... Mr. Thurston! Mr. Thurston! Thurston? Yes? Inspector Ram Singh, Calcutta Harbor Department. Oh, how do you do? I must apologize for keeping you waiting. Well, that's all right. I've been looking over these cargo and passenger lists, the final voyages of those three missing ships. Ah, uh, yes. Sailings to destiny, rendezvous with the unknown. You have a poet's viewpoint, Inspector. The influence of the Orient, Mr. Thurston. The proximity to strange occurrences. Yes. Now, according to these lists, the missing freighters were all carrying small, highly valuable shipments in their strong rooms. Rubies, gold, sapphires. And on the last one, the Mozambique, nearly a million dollars in platinum bullion. It's possible, of course. They also carried passengers. True enough, but I... I accomplices. That submarine had to have help from somebody on board the ships. Some to knock out the radio, break out, break open the strong room, so on. The radio, of course, to prevent distress signals. That's right. In one or more cases, at least. Pardon me. Inspector Singh? What? Oh, yes. Yes, I see. Thank you. Mr. Thurston, I told you I'd arranged for a car to take us to the hospital to talk with Mohammed Lal. Yeah. Shall we go now? It won't be necessary. Mohammed Lal is dead. For you, Mr. Thurston, I would be only too happy to lay down my life within limits, of course, but this is different. This is work. Zagon. The only reason I brought you with you to Calcutta is because you said you'd worked as a steward once. But it was only temporary. That's all this is. You don't have to make a career of it now. The Bangalore sails day after tomorrow. Why don't you get that Muhammad Lal to be a steward? Because he's dead. Huh? I thought he was doing okay. He was. Until his wife came to visit him this morning. The old battle axe, huh? Oh, well, very pretty, according to the hospital authorities. Strange thing, though, Zeko. What do you mean, strange? I did some checking up on Mohammed Lau. He wasn't married. You can count on my cooperation to the fullest extent, Mr. Thurston, and the entire facilities of my ship. But I must confess the whole thing seems a bit uh, fantastic. A pirate submarine. Three freighters have disappeared without a trace, Captain Macon. I know, I know. But still, 
Well, we'll sail in a few minutes now. Uh, Captain Macon. Yes, what is it, Mr. Winslow? Sparks has Batavia on short wave, sir. I think you wanted to talk with the port agent there. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Thurston. Oh, of course, yes. See you later. Hello. Well. I hope you don't disapprove of informal introductions between fellow passengers. I'm Carla Reaver. I'm Ken Thurston. How do you do, Miss Reaver? Um, has your table been assigned yet? Oh, I'm up to captains, I believe. Oh, how nice. Yours, too? <laughs> Why else would I say how nice? Uh, Miss Weaver, I'm beginning to form a very high opinion of the cuisine on the Bangalore. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I beg your pardon. Huh? What is this I beg your pardon stuff? You seem to have the advantage of me, steward. Advantage? Steward? What? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you remember, Mr. Thurston, the George line. Zell Schmidt, I have done be that. Of course, Cairo to Calcutta run. Well... Small world, isn't it? <laughs> you said it. And crazy, too. It's stored here in the midship hold, Mr. Thurston. Uh, just a second. Now go ahead. Thanks. Now over this way. Uh, Captain Macon told me why you're aboard, but uh, I don't see what this five-ton shipment of candles has to do with it. That's what I want to find out, Mr. Winslow. Every one of those missing ships also carried five-ton of candles. Here we are. It's these cases stacked at the sides. Uh Uh-huh. Right against the hull. Let's open one of these cases. On my responsibility, of course. All right. I guess I can pry the top off with this bar. I can't see any connection. Between a submarine attack and camp. There you are. Let's see now. Uh, uh, that look like a candle, Mr. Winslow? No, it doesn't. Why, it's... Yeah, that's right. Five tons of it. Well, let's close it up again. Yes! <laughs> Who is it? Come on out of there. All right, all right. I'm coming. Just keep your... Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, for Steward, what are you doing down here in the hole? Oh, just catching up on a little sleep. What? Oh, no. I'm not really a steward. I'm, I'm just a... Uh... You tell him, Mr. Thurston. Mm, tell him what? But... Mr. I never saw you before in my life. But, 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 but... What have you got in your pocket? This, oh, just a little pussycat, see? Kitty, kitty. Atta, patta, patta. Atta, patta. The cook gave him to me. I don't care who gave it to you. Get rid of it. And then get back to work. Now, listen to you. I mean, sir. Commodore. Hey, Admiral. Oh, shut up. Someone's coming in. Eh? But, I, I... I didn't know anyone was here. Passengers aren't allowed below decks, Mr. Humphrey. Ridiculous. Red tape. Just doing a bit of sightseeing, you know. Besides, you're wrong. Mr. Thurston's a passenger. He's here. Mr. Thurston requested special permission from the captain. I suggest you do the same. Eh. Stuffy attitude. Suit yourself, though. I'll go. Ship's officers, little tin gods. Eh. Good day, gentlemen. Hey... Maybe he wanted to look at them cases I was sleeping on. Could be. How come all the excitement about them? What have they got in them? Dynamite. Oh, dynamite. Oh, uh... Got a bucket of water handy, Mr. Winslow. Well, Sagar, you decided to take over my cabin? Oh, Mrs. Thurston, you are looking at a worn-out brake horse. Oh, I should have stayed in New York. Oh, there are worse jobs. That first mate, Winslow guy, is nothing but a Silas McGee. Oh, sure, sure. What do you do with your cat? Oh, he's playing around in here someplace. He got thirsty, so I gave him a drink of water out of... Hey, I found out something, Mr. Thurston. Huh? We got a stowaway on board. Stowaway? Well, not exactly, because the captain knows about it. He gave the chief steward strict orders not to disturb whoever is in cabin 41. Captain, cabin 41, eh? See if we can find out who it is. Oh, I'll be only too happy. How much? Never mind how much. We'll talk about that when... Zagon? What's the matter, Mr. Thurston? Where did you get that drink of water you gave the cat? Why, out of this pitcher, here on the table by your bed. 
I didn't think you mind. I don't. The cat's lying here dead. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anacin for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anacin tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anacin brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So... The next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. And now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Nine o'clock at night, and the freighter Bangalore plows steadily southward through the warm swells of the Indian Ocean. On board, five tons of dynamite, a mysterious passenger, a dead cat, and a poisoner. Ahead, waiting somewhere in the darkness, a submarine, violence, and death. I'm always such a fool on an ocean voyage. About uh, friendships, I mean. The rest of the world so far away, nothing seems to matter but just living. But the rest of the world still exists. Even if it is far away. No, not for me. When I close the door of cabin 25, that's my word. What's that, Miss Reaver? 25's your cabin? Yes, I'm a next-door neighbor to Mr. Thurston. That's right. I'm in 26. Well, my neighbor too, then. 27's mine. Miss Reaver and I have you hemmed in, old boy. <laughs> right between Scylla and Charybdis. Between... Pardon me. Oh, uh, here is your coffee, Mr. Thurston. Thanks, Stuart. What about the captain? Meet me outside on the deck, Mr. Thurston. I got a hot tea. Right, say, Uh Maybe you can tell us, Mr. Thurston, the captain. Why doesn't he show up for dinner? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Humphrey. Navigation problems, I suppose. The Indian Ocean isn't quite as tame as it seems. Oh, but you're wrong, old boy. Still in the Bay of Bengal, you know. North, northeast of the Endeman Islands, if I'm correct. I imagine you are, Mr. Humphrey. Oh, excuse me, I think I'll go on deck get some air. Eh? I say now, touch his own tent. No intention. intention. Over here, Mr. Thurston. All right, say, go on, what's up? Well, it's the story I was telling you about. I got a look at him. Guess who, Mr. Thurston? Who? It's that harbor guy in Calcutta, Inspector Ram Singh. Inspector, it's Ken Thurston, Inspector. Open up. Come in, Mr. Thurston. I suppose the captain told you. No, just a hunch. One of those mysterious hunches of the Orient. You get a sudden desire for an ocean trip, Inspector? <laughs> Your attitude is most interesting, Mr. Thurston. Glad you like it. It implies a distrust of me. Whereas I am here because of distrusting you. Well, we could go over my credentials again. Credentials? In the Orient, there is nothing so easy to obtain as false credentials. Like those of a harbor inspector, for example? I have held the job for ten years, Mr. Thurston. Quite a length of time to fool the man who signs my paychecks. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Let's assume we're both here for the same reason. Good. I have one lead of my own I might mention... There's a steward aboard who's been acting very strange. I think I know the one you mean. A short fellow speaks with an accent. That's the one. He's always prowling about, seldom does any work at all. I believe you've hit on something there, Inspector. It sounds definitely suspicious. Watch him.
Perhaps I should have told you that Inspector Singh was aboard, Mr. Thurston. But frankly, not knowing you, I felt it just as well to have two independent investigators. Mistrust seems to be very common in this part of the world, Captain Macon. No, 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 it's not that. But I'm responsible for this ship. The passengers, cargo, and crew. And when I think about what could happen, well... What about the passengers? Know anything about any of them? No, no, they're all strangers. Except Mr. Humphrey, of course. He's sailed with me before. I see. Inspector Singh may know some of them. Under the circumstances, I suppose you'll work together. We're doing it already. We're watching Zago. But I don't see what... Time for your relief, Captain. All right, Mr. Winslow. Take over the bridge. The log's up, and everything is in order so far. You'll excuse me, Mr. Thurston? Uh, Of course. Good night, gentlemen. The captain's a good man, but he's certainly jittery on this trip. Well, he may have reason to be. That's the trouble. Not knowing when they'll make their play or even if they'll make it. They'll make it. I'll lay odds on that. When they're left a witness to the sinking of the Mozambique, that... What is it, Mr. Thurston? Turn off the bridge lights. I want to open this window. All right. There. What do you see? Somebody's flashing a light down there on the boat deck. Why, that's international code. Yeah. Check it with me. O N I G tonight at T W O A M. Tonight at 2 a.m. And there's an answering flash from across the water. The submarine. Well, we know when. All we have to find out is how. And then stop it. Do you have this pass, Yeah, right here. Wait a second. The fool. It isn't even locked. <laughs> Come on. Sound asleep. All right, Crunker. Take care of him. A pleasure. No, I said it ought to be about right here, so I'll swing from the side here like this. <laughs> well, that's all for Mr. X. You want me to finish him off? Why bother? In a half hour, they'll all be finished off. Let's go to work. Sparks isn't in here. The wireless room's empty. It doesn't matter. The important thing is to smash that radio. We can take care of Sparks later. Come on. Tear off the mic and the key first, Bronco, and then we... Insomnia, Inspector? Thurston. But, but I slugged him. It can't be insomnia. You're dreaming. All right, Mr. Winslow, put the cuffs on them. Okay, boys, turn around. Not me, you it. don't. I said hold it. All right. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Poor Cronko. I much prefer the handcuffs, you're Mr. Op- Winslow. You're opposed to personal violence, Inspector. Only when it has no chance of succeeding. I'm a fatalist, Mr. Thurston. Influence of the Orient. I'll get it. Wireless room, Thurston. Good. All right, Captain. Take him to the lounge. I'll meet you there. The boys in the hole just caught two men setting a time detonator on the dynamite. There's still been no move in the strong room. Singh! Who else is in with you? I fear I won't be much help to you, Mr. Thurston. I don't feel very talkative. Too bad. We might have had an interesting conversation about your next move, for instance. Breaking open the strong room, and then using one of the ship's boats to get out there to the submarine before the explosion. What about that sub, Mr. Thurston? Suppose they get suspicious and try to board us. Well, it's 1.46 now. They'll probably stand by for another 15 or 20 minutes at least. That's enough time. Maybe you'd better open up the radio and make contact. All right, sir. Then you want me to search that cabin, right? Right. I'll see you in the lounge. Well, Inspector, pick up your friend and let's go join the party. Just 
sit here and do nothing, you know. No, no. Hostile submarine out there, that sort of thing. You can rest assured, Mr. Humphrey, steps are being taken. What steps, Captain? We surely have a right to know what's being done for our protection. I really couldn't say, Miss Reaver. That is, I... What I'd... Captain Macon means is that I'm taking the steps. Well, now, that's very interesting, Mr. Thurston. Official position of some sort, I suppose? Yes, of some sort. But I still don't understand what it's all about. Those four men, the ones you're holding prisoner... Yes, the... yes, by Jove. Passengers, all of them, rubbing elbows with us. Let's say... Criminals posing as passengers, Mr. Humphrey. Part of the same gang that's manning that submarine. But who is manning it? After all, we're not at war. Maybe Inspector Singh can answer that. Words still seem to fail me, Mr. Thurston. Right, then I'll make a guess. A German U-boat that was operating in the Arabian Sea or the Persian Gulf at the time of the surrender and remained unreported. Some of the crew must have stayed with it and kept it in commission. Possibly hiding out along the East African coast. Right, Inspector? I think I hear plane motors, Mr. Thurston. Good, right on time. Anyway, by some means or other, the sub-crew contacted Inspector Singh at Calcutta, made a deal with him, and went into business. Piracy. Singh was in a position to pick out the ships for them, supply course data, plant accomplices on board, and so on. It worked three times in a row. And the Bangalore was intended to be the fourth victim. Also the last, probably. Since they let a witness get away and the heat was on. <laughs> Say, now, what is this, Mr. Thurston? Where do those planes come from? They're light bombers from a U.S. carrier on maneuvers in the Andaman Islands. I radioed for help. Look, they're dropping flares on the water. And there, there's the sub. Yeah, surfaced. And with half the crew on deck. Caught cold. Are they there? Yes, by heaven, they're going to fight. They've manned the deck gun. Uh, no chance. Uh, the planes are circling back. Men the live boats! Men the pumps, men alive. Sagon, let's drive all over your head. What's the matter? You should ask, Mr. Thurston, just because I sneaked into your cabin for a wink or two of sleep, you didn't have to do but that. what happened? Who knows? When I woke up, I was unconscious. Ah, so you're the one Singh and his partner slugged. I seem to have made a number of mistakes. So did your friend out there on the submarine. Those planes will blow him out of the water. Well, there's the first one now, coming in for a bomb run. Close. Come on in, Mr. Winslow. Things are getting a little exciting. Well, I found it, Mr. Thurston, right where you said. Good. Uh, missed again. They've cleared the deck. Looks like they're going to submerge. There's still two things that haven't been explained. Mohammed Lal's death in the Calcutta Hospital and the poisoning of Zagon's cat. Oh, come now. Hardly the time to track down cat killers, old boy. Well, I think it is the time, Mr. Humphrey. Particularly since the poison used in both cases has just been found in Miss Reaver's cabin. What? Oh, but well, well, that's ridiculous. You surely can't it's think really that I It's really no use, Carla. Mr. Thurston holds all the cards. I've often told you one had to be a fatalist in this sort of game. She was most valuable, Mr. Thurston, in keeping the pursers of the ships occupied. Yes, I imagine. Center. No more sub. No, no more sub. And no more American flag being used to cover up somebody's crooked game. That was your big mistake, Singh. Trying to confuse witnesses by using that flag. It's been tried before, and it may be again. But it never works. You're right about one thing, though. The man who plays that game had better be a fatalist. Because that's a game that's always fatal. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'm sure you'd like to know that tonight you also listen to Betty Lou Gerson, Stephen Garay, Will Wright, Herbert Rawlinson, Stan Waxman, Harry Bartell, Daniel Hurley, and Peter Leeds. Next week, our story is called As Black as Diamonds. And believe me, the black diamonds involved are worth the peace of the world. Oh, and uh, Leon Belasco will be back with us as Pagan on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X is a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. 
and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Join your hit parade and hear the big show with Jimmy Durante on NBC. Welcome back. Well, it will be great, actually, to have Leon Belasco back. Uh, I definitely missed uh, Pagon and uh, just the way that Leon Belasco played him. I don't think you can just you know, throw in any substitute character and with another actor and have it work just as well. Also, I wonder if Ken Thurston understands what fatalism is. Because fatalism has nothing to do with fatality. It has to do with fate. And I do think the after show uh, remarks or endings do continue to be a little disappointing. We've gone from stirring speeches to really bad puns. Though, that, though I also have to say that I think the inspector's argument that it was fatalism comes off a bit lame. It was fate that we would be caught. It might be fate, or it might have something to do with the effect that you were aware of the existence of a dangerous U.S. agent known as the man called X, and you decided to fly a U.S. flag from your submarine, essentially all but guaranteeing that he would come out to foil your plan. Or it could be fate. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback. And I have an email from Peter who writes in because he, he notes that I've mentioned the Avengers on the show, the uh, 1960s uh, TV series starring Patrick McNeese and quite a few other actors. Uh, uh, fate really uh, hit in the United States when uh, Diana Rigg uh, was uh, starred as Mrs. Peel. And uh, he writes in, I heard you mention this series, which was filmed at Elstree, uh, near the area where I've lived for the past 16 years. Many of the locations are places I pass regularly. I don't believe any show has changed so much during its lifetime. Originally, Steed was just the sidekick in the first series. It was a pretty dark theme based upon the surviving uh, Series 1 episodes. Steve became the main character in the, uh, uh, Series 2 as Ian Hendry had quit. It became more comical as time went on, especially during the first color series with Mrs. Peel uh, were needed, appearing to her on a traffic light and the comedy endings. Quite a few scripts from uh, Kathy uh, Gale were regurgitated for Mrs. Peel. It was particularly notable that during Mrs. Peel's time, she killed uh, people and Steve didn't. I think 13 in one episode. Uh, season 6 didn't have the same, or Series 6 didn't have the same charisma. It says something that Honor Blackman and Diana Reg left the show to make Bond films. Uh, the New Avengers was uh, comparably corny in the 70s style with a number of the plots rehashed or ideas from the original series. I found your channel, which is great because I'm a fan of 50s radio. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for sharing. And The Avengers is definitely a series that changed a lot. As I said, uh, really, uh, the... Emma Peel series, uh, in, uh, which I think were series four, five, and six, and the first episode of the uh, seventh series. That was what, you know, people in the U.S. actually watched and which you know, was, you know, rebroadcast over here. But it had had three seasons. I, I think the characterization of first series is accurate as far as the circulating episodes go. 
But with the first series of the Avengers, which had Patrick McNeese and Ian Hendry as Dr. David Keel, was kind of dark for uh, some of the early episodes, particularly uh, in that Dr. Keel's fiance was killed uh, during the first uh, episode. And the first couple of episodes was about him trying to catch the criminals that did it. Only two and a half episodes of that series uh, survived, and Studio Canal, who holds the rights to the Avengers, actually reached an agreement with Big Finish, the British audio drama company, probably best known for their doctor audio dramas, to adapt that lost season. And so they took uh, the scripts they had, all the information they could find on those episodes, and adapted them to audio as if they were recorded in the 1960s. They cast Anthony Howe as Dr. Keel and Julian Wadham as uh, John Steed. And they're actually pretty good. I wouldn't say that after you get past the first couple of episodes that they are particularly dark. You know, a relationship, a uh, friendship develops between Steed and Dr. Keel. And there's some humor, and you already have some of the scripts showing the John Steed uh, charm that, you know, became famous throughout the series. I think they were more or less kind of equals in terms of their roles in the series. And it was a fascinating experiment. They did the entire first series over seven volumes. And I'm actually going to play you a trailer... For the Avengers, the Lost Episodes, Series 1. Now, this is not a paid advertisement. I don't get any commission or anything. It's just something that I enjoyed listening to, and the question kind of prompted it. So, let's go ahead and we'll take a listen to this trailer. It runs about 2 minutes 40 seconds. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Avengers, The Lost Episodes, Volume 1. Would you just tell me who you are and what you're doing? Who am I? I'm a kind of civil servant. My name's Steed, John Steed. And as to what I'm doing, well, the first thing I'm going to do is trust you. Later, I hope you'll trust me. Bart, get in here. Boss? Mason's boys are moving in on Sammy Cohen's spieler. Couple of car loads. Murphy's going to need help. Get going. Round up the rest of the boys. Everyone you can find. Then we'll put the first part of the plan into operation as soon as possible. Do you have a surgery tomorrow afternoon? Yes. Right. Your contact will approach you, and when he does, you know what to do. Refuse to give him what he wants. I'm glad to see you enter into the spirit of the thing. Get the doctor a drink. Now, where... Ow! Usually I prefer to heal people, not punch them in the face. But in his case, I'll make an exception. Stand back, let me see how he is. Who are we meeting? Not we. You. All right, me. Who am I meeting? Your maker. There. Your hand looks better now, doesn't it? Would you like the doctor to give you a certificate? I'd like the doctor to give me a double scotch. This is a surgery and not an off-licence. Pity. All right. I'll see what I can do. Knock over the Vance brothers and the rest are easy. They have to follow someone. If there's no one else, they'll have to follow you. Too true. They will. It's time Spicer started earning his key. It seems you've been barking up the wrong tree, Superintendent. Oh, it's the right tree. And you're right about barking. Next time, Doctor, I'll bite. Big Finish. We love stories. Ooh. 
Welcome back. Really solid trailer and gives a sample of what the series, uh, the Lost uh, episode series was like. And I think they capture uh, the feel of how it must have been on television. Now, if you are interested, this is available as a download. You can get it from Big Finish's website. You can get the first five series uh, for single credit uh, with Audible. If you've got Spotify Premium, you can listen to uh, this, the entire first five series uh, for free. Those are posted on Spotify. And if your library has Hoopla and you're set up with the Hoopla app, uh, you can get the first five series that way. As I said, it's a very interesting uh, series, and, uh, and regardless... I don't get anything if you uh, listen to them one way or another. Because, again, not a paid spot. But thanks so much for the email, Peter. And now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Stephanie, Patreon supporter since March 2020, currently supporting us at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Well, that will do it for today. If you are listening to this on YouTube, be sure to... Like the video, subscribe to the channel, mark the notification bell. Join us back here tomorrow for Mystery is My Hobby, and then next Wednesday, another episode of The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.